Okay. Um, good morning, afternoon, evening, and night, wherever you are. Um, thank you for tuning into this video. Um, my name is Ryan Shi. I am a PhD student at Carnegie Mellon University. Um, so you might wonder a bit why you don't see me in the video. And later on, you might also wonder that this current slide we have here seems to be the only slide we have throughout this video. Um, so first of all, I would like to apologize because of my recent health conditions. I am not able to work at computer screen for any prolonged uh, period of time. And so preparing a PowerPoint slides for this talk is beyond me at this point. Um, therefore, I'm doing this sort of audio only version of this talk. So, okay, so our paper is titled a recommender system for crowdsourcing food rescue platforms. Um, so food waste and food insecurity are two important problems that unfortunately coexist in many parts of the world. So let's take the United States as an example, right? So in the US, about a third of our food um, actually goes to waste. In the meantime, about one eighth of the um, total, like overall US household suffer from some sort of food insecurity at some point in the year. So this simultaneous food waste and security is very um, unfortunate. And one key type of nonprofit organizations that stood out to um, address this challenge is the food rescue organizations. So they basically serve as, as an intermediary between food donors and food recipients. Um, so um, food donors are typically grocery stores or like restaurants. They have excessive food they want to donate. So I have to uh, clarify. So these excessive food are perfectly legitimate, um, un un unexpired food uh, that they just uh, want to donate. And then um, the recipient organizations. So basically the, the recipient organizations are other kinds of nonprofits that serve local um, low resource underprivileged communities. So when the donors, uh, when the donor calls the food rescue um, platform saying we have food that we want to donate, then the dispatcher at the food rescue, they will contact one of the uh, recipient organization and then such the donation is matched. And when, once, so the food rescue organization, the special thing about it is that it doesn't have the human resources nor do they have the vehicles to actually transport the food. They rely on external volunteers to do the transportation. So once a do donor recipient pair is matched, the dispatcher will then post this information on a smartphone app. So all their volunteers have the smartphone app installed on their phone. So they will be able to see this information and then if they want, they can claim it um, click on their smartphone and then go out, pick up the food, deliver it to the recipient, and that's it. That's pretty simple. Now, when I ask you, um, let's think about like what could possibly go wrong in this whole procedure. Okay, so one thing that that really um, bothers um, the dispatcher and everyone involved is that. Um, these volunteers, after all, they are not employees. So the food rescue organization has little to no control over these volunteers. What if some rescue stayed on the platform for several hours, approaching its deadline, but nobody wants to claim it? This is going to be very discouraging to it, all the parties involved. So there's a lot of uncertainty around volunteer activity. And so how can we reduce that uncertainty? How can we better engage with the volunteers um, so that more rescues will be claimed in time? Um, so that's the question that we want to study in this task. Um, so, right, I, I mentioned earlier that the volunteers, they have the smartphone app installed. So one way that the full rescue organization is already um, engaging with the volunteers is by using um, push notifications. Um, so they're doing this and they're doing this in a way that um, already makes some sense. Um, so how they send push notifications, they, for each fixed upcoming rescue, then you will look at who are the volunteers that are within five miles distance from the donor. Now the app will then send push notifications to these volunteers, and then if they don't 
and if nobody claims it within a certain period of time, then it will send another wave of push notification to everyone else. Uh, now, this location-based method some, makes some sense, right? Like um, we obviously, like maybe if you're closer to some place, then it's more likely for you to actually go there and pick up food and deliver food, right? But it's probably not the whole picture. And the reason I'm saying that is um, the hit rate of this current procedure is about 44%. So by hit rate, we mean that if you look across all of the uh, food rescues trips, um, so what percentage of the food rescues uh, do we see that um, the first way the volunteers who got notified in the first wave notification actually claim the rescue? Um, so that this hit rate is our main objective in the study, and we hope to devise a machine learning method to um, improve this hit rate. So now, we studied this as a recommender system problem. And now we talk about recommender system. So what are the users and what are the items? So in this case, our users are the rescue trips and our items are the volunteers. So this might sound a little bit counterintuitive, right? But because like the user is not, it, it, user is some object, but an item is actually a human being, but uh, just make this clear. So we wanna recommend volunteers to a food rescue trip. And by recommend, we mean send push notifications. Okay, so we want to select a small subset of volunteers to send push notifications to for each given food rescue trip. Now for a recommender system, um, the first thing you might come to you is that um, the collaborative filtering approach, and that doesn't work in this case. The reason is um, each user in our recommender system, each food rescue is new. They come to that platform, you do a recommendation once, and then it's gone. Like you never do it again, and everything you encounter is a new rescue. So we always start, we, we always get stuck in the cold start phase of the recommender system forever. So obviously we need a kind of a rather content-based approach, but then if we're talking about like content-based approach, then let's think about some, like what are the features um, that we're gonna use, right? Um, so um, there, so in this study, we identified uh, some features that um, are actually quite useful. So I, just, I can mention a couple of them and for the rest you can and kind of refer to our paper. So one thing is familiarity. Um, if we found that if you are a volunteer and then if you have done a rescue in the past at this particular donor location, then you are more likely to return to that location to do a rescue trip again. Um, this, Right, like if you're if you did that once, then you probably know how to pick up food from there, like who the contact person at that location is, and like how to pick up food and all that. You 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 are more familiar, so you want to you you are more comfortable doing it again. And that's a very common thing, and also like other factors such as like for example like weather. Um, if it's a rainy day comparing to a sunny day, then the set of volunteers who tend to be more active might be different. Um, so all that. Um, then how this uh, machine learning model actually works. So the input is the features of a rescue volunteer pair. So we have a particular rescue in mind, and then we have pick a particular volunteer, and then we get all the features for this pair. So that's the input. And then the output is a single number. So you can interpret the number as um, the likelihood of this particular volunteer that's gonna claim this particular rescue trip. Um, so when we actually do this, we for when we actually want to generate the recommended list for a particular rescue, so what we're gonna do, so we fix the rescue and then we iterate over all the volunteers in the database. Let's say we have 9,000 volunteers in the database, then we are gonna uh, run this machine learning model uh, 9,000 9, times uh, for fix the rescue for all the volunteers. And then we get 9,000 output numbers and then we run them from top to bottom, and then we pick the top K um, of them, and that's gonna be our recommended volunteers. Um, so in um, so this, uh, so we tried a bunch of ML models and we settled on a neural network model, which achieved the performance, which achieved the hit rate of about 73%. And note that this is much better than the current hit rate of like 44%. Uh, but uh, it's not the end of the story because like, after we got this number, like this number is good, but we looked a bit deeper into um, what's really contributing to this good performance. We look at which volunteers are actually being preferred. 
no sending send push notifications. And we actually figured out that a very small subset of volunteers who tend to be the most frequent volunteers for this whole full dress group platform tend to get be identified, recognized by the machine learning algorithm so that they, these very small group of volunteers get notified for all the um, food rescues in, in the training and testing set. Now, this is problematic. So why? Like we started out, like it's also quite ironic because we started out um, hoping that we want to devise a machine learning algorithm so that uh, we can improve the hit rate. Now, apparently it improves the hit rate, but if you think about it, if you deploy this in the real world, so what impact that they have? Like you, tend up, you end up always sending push notifications to a very small subset of volunteers who also tend to be the most useful volunteers for your platform. So if you are one of them, you receive 20 notifications every day. So the best thing you could do is probably you mute the notification. And the worst thing is you probably just leave the platform, you quit altogether. Now, if that really happens, then probably when you actually deploy this, the hit rate will actually go down rather than going up. So that's the ironic part. So that's um, something we have to fix. Um, so our way to fix this diversity issue is pretty simple. Like just, um, um, just implement a upper bound on the number of push notifications that where um, we, we could send to every single volunteers throughout the day. Um, and, but then a new problem is that uh, com in contrast to the standard literature on like recommended system where the testing and training set are all fixed and offline. In our case, the testing data set is online. Like all the, each food rescue uh, trip arrives in the system in an online fashion. We, when, we, when we assign the, uh, the recommendation decision for this current uh, for this current food rescue trip, we don't know what will come up next. So it's not easy to enforce that diversity like upper bound constraint. So what are we doing? We devised a kind of a new algorithm to um, project uh, uh to to project what's going to happen uh, for the rest of the day and then uh, decide on the um on the push notification strategy for the current rescue so this behaves with, uh, philosophically this uh, sounds like like the model predictive control in the control literature so it's like we project a trajectory of the rest of the day and then we we make um we solve an optimization problem for the projected um trajectories but then we only take the local decision uh, we only take the decision uh, of the current time step and then at the next time step we simulate everything again and then and only us still only do the perform the decision um for the current time step so on and so forth so with this we are able to um achieve um achieve reasonable performance uh at, and at the same time keeping the push notification histogram or like distribution very close to the current existing like status quo approach. But at the same time, we also uh, improve the hit rate from 44% to about 60 to 65%. Obviously it's not gonna be as good as 72% because we are like kind of enforcing some constraints ourselves so that we are kind of binding our machine learning model in some sense, but it's still much better than the current, um, current um, tools uh, performance. So that's um, basically what this work is about. And in the end, I would just like to thank our collaborators at Foreign to Food Rescue um, in Pittsburgh. Um, they are really the Einstein hero behind this work. And we wanna thank them for um, working with them, providing all the data, the help, the, the, all these conversations throughout the past two years and the, uh, um, we have also like learned a lot throughout this procedure and hopefully our work could be useful um, uh, to them uh, in some sense. And also we would like to thank for to Food Rescue and also all of the other food rescue organizations in the world, and especially during this pandemic, they are doing their job has been much more important than ever. Um, so, uh, Thank you to all of you and uh, last but not least um, in this pandemic, like everyone's screen time is uh, increasing dramatically. So take care of your eyes, uh, get dressed and enjoy. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for my talk. And yeah, thank you for listening. And please feel free to write me an email if you have any questions or comments about this work. Bye-bye.